something a little different. And for floor, I, I don't necessarily recommend this. I don't know if I've ever seen it done. And um, there's just a few reasons why I wouldn't. This is stone. And with stone, it's very porous. And uh, there's a lot of, there's imperfections for sure with stone. And due to that, you can really just have some problems laying something like this. Now, if you notice, it's got a mesh back. Um, it comes in a 12 by 12 and uh, you can cut this mesh very easily and then stick it up. I have it on my wall in my bathroom and it comes out really nice on a wall. And actually, both of these kind I used. And it's just, it's really a neat look. Now, there's two ways to grout this. And um, the one way is to take your grout and just to do the whole thing. But what happens is your grout fills in all these holes. It's probably really hard to see, um, but there's a lot of imperfections and holes, and the grout will just soak right it, get right in there, and then so you'll have you know grout lines along the side, and then grout inside, and that is one completely one completely different look from the other way, which I've done before. It takes a long time, but just take a cake icer, something like the cake. I those ones with the bag and the spout at the bottom, if you don't know what that is, um, fill it up with grout, and you just squeeze the grout into the grout lines. So you want to make sure that you don't get any on the tile. Now, we have to be careful when you're forming the grout lines, and what that means we'll get into later as well, but you want to uh, be really careful to keep the grout only in there, and that's a totally different look. Now, once you've done that, uh, know that there are holes and that kind of thing, this one even goes as far as having a hole right through it. I don't know if you can see my shirt through it, but it's actually that big, and it goes all the way through. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's a, it is a hole. So you got to watch out for that. And uh, with that, make sure you seal your tile. It wouldn't hurt to seal it beforehand. Uh, make sure you you do it though. You do it multiple times, and uh, and do it well because your water will get into it. It'll soak the mortar, like you'll end up with a really bad um, finished product, so be careful with that. Um, where to use it? <laughs> said I've never done it or really seen it done, so I wouldn't really recommend it other than walls. The cost is quite high as well um, with this stuff. I think like for a sheet of this is like 10 bucks, and uh, so you gotta be, want to probably use that pretty sparingly. It's not that easy to clean due to the fact that it is so porous and durability it's stone, so you know it's durable, but it's so porous and whatnot, and it just—it's <laughs> such a weird tile that I wouldn't recommend for the floor. Cutting tools, pretty much just stick with your angle grinder. You can use a wet tile saw, but angle grinders work far better. And when you're trying to do little pieces like that, it's really difficult to try and push that through the uh, wet tile saw properly. So angle grinder cuts really nice; comes out really well. Um, spacing, as you can see. These ones here are actually spaced for you, if you can see that all right. Um, and these ones are, are spaced at, I believe that's an eighth inch. And so with these you pretty much have to do what it has and you have to do the eighth inch there. Um, but you can go up to, you know, whatever with, you're using these ones, you can do whatever size. And there are some bigger ones, um, but once again, it's up to you how you do it. Um, regular mortar is fine for it and um, it is, an okay tile to lay. I've only done it on the wall, so I can't really tell you what it's like on the floors, but um, it's a pretty tile, but not necessarily the best for your floors.